Hi, this is uh, Dr. Vitla Venu coming in front of you uh, in continuation to the previous content that is uh, CNC part programming. Today we will discuss the uh, some more contents in CNC part programming. Let me quickly go through the what we have discussed in the last session. Uh, in the last session, in the last session, we have seen the coordinates, referencing methods in which we have discussed the absolute positioning then incremental positioning whenever we write a program then what will be the coordinates reference I mean whether the coordinates are with respect to the origin or with respect to the previous location of the tool so these two tells about the positioning of the tools so how we are positioning how we are coordinating the movements of the tool so this is what the absolute and incremental uh, positioning we have seen then we have discussed the uh, fixed zero and floating zero in the case of flex, fixed zero the uh, reference point is fixed uh, preferably and uh, normally the fixed in the case of fixed zero the origin lies at the bottom left corner of any of the work plane so with respect to that point i mean that is fixed one it, it never goes it, it is not going to change but uh, this is this type of fixed point zero uh, method is referencing method is uh, used in the milling machines basically uh, uh, milling operations whereas the floating point zero whenever we are performing the turning operation sometimes the axis we need to make it as a zero point so we are performing the turning operation if we assume the axis of the workpiece as a zero coordinate or zero reference then it is very easy to perform the uh, operation and it is very easy to program or give the coordinates this is what we have discussed in the last session fixed zero and floating zero we have discussed then <clears throat> uh, nc part programming also we have discussed in which we have discussed the structure what will be the structure uh, we need to follow and this nc programming consists the characters words blocks in turn we have the program so a program consists the blocks then blocks are uh, having the words so the combination of words we will get the block combination of blocks we will get the program the combination of characters we will get the word so that we have seen in our last session then uh, along with this uh, we are also moved forward to discuss the few of the um, m codes miscellaneous codes which are specific to the uh, machine control commands we have seen uh, machine control functions we have seen in our last session but in this session uh, we will see uh, the leftover uh, codes in miscellaneous functions we will see briefly then we will move forward to discuss the preparatory functions which are specific to the controlling the movements of the tool and uh, then we will move forward to discuss the programming formats there are different programming formats like the fixed to do tab sequential and word address format what exactly these three we will see with an example then we will move forward to see the canned cycle in which we will discuss the simple turning cycle to save the time and to efficiency of the programmer so let me move to discuss the what are the uh, miscellaneous functions miscellaneous functions are the commands which are programmed to control the machine operations not the uh, tool operations these are program these codes or functions are used to control the machine but not the coordinates of the tool that means other than the coordinates of the tool the tools which are specific to the machine operation is called the miscellaneous functions are the m codes so in other words m word is the machine control language in in other words the language we have some specific definition, specific codes, specific functions to control the mission. So those functions, those codes are, I mean, that type of programming uh, is embedded in the main program that is called the uh, miscellaneous functions. I mean, those are called the miscellaneous functions. Then <clears throat> M codes are words will control the working components that activate and deactivate the coolant. Example, if you use one M code, M08 or M09, like that, it is going to activate whether 
I mean, if you use one core, it is going to switch on the coolant. If you use one M core, it is going to switch off. If you use one M core, M03, this spindle will rotate in clockwise direction. M04, this spindle will rotate in anti-clockwise direction. So that means there are some specific commands, uh, programmic, uh, which are used in the program to control the mission, mission activities. So maybe it is a spindle rotation, maybe the direction of the spindle rotation, and maybe the coolant flow whether i mean uh, some uh, some operations require the coolant and after uh, uh, doing some operations if we want to switch up the uh, coolant in that case we have some specific commands to perform the operations which are specific to the mission so those commands are called those functions which are those codes which are specific to perform some functions which are related to the mission is called the miscellaneous functions then let us see what are the miscellaneous functions in the table. Uh, then M00 is to stop the program, which is no way control related to the uh, tool movement. Then if, whenever we want to stop the program, after writing the program, we will end M00. We will write code M00 to stop the program. Then whenever we want to rotate the spindle in a clockwise direction, we instruct the mission using the code that is m03 the function of m03 is to rotate the spindle in clockwise direction then we have m04 code which is also used to control the spindle and to rotate the spindle and to instruct the mission to rotate the spindle in counterclockwise direction then if you want to stop the spindle after doing some operation in i mean we have some requirements to stop the spindle in that case so we are going to use a command or a code, M code or a miscellaneous function. So that is uh, M05 we can use. Then, uh, I mean, suppose if you want to change the tool in that case, I mean, in between the operations, so we have a requirement to change the tool. In that case, we are going to use M06. Then as I said just now, coolant can be switched on using M08 and coolant can be uh, uh, off by using M09 code, then uh, you have clamping, unclamping, maybe workpiece or maybe tool. So we can use these two commands or the M cores to clamp and unclamp the work on the table. Then we have the program end and ready to another start. So we can stop the program and it may be ready, the mission may be ready to start the uh, another start. So these are the few miscellaneous uh, codes uh, used frequently while writing the program. These are very, very important codes which are specific to control the movements of the tool. So that we are calling this as the miscellaneous course. Let me move further to discuss the preparatory functions. So almost 90%, 90, 95% program is with the M codes and G codes. Of course, other than the M codes and G codes, we have other commands to control the or to specify some uh, uh, speed, feed, and S, S word, T word to uh, change the tool or to select the tool, then to address the tool, S word to, to specify the spindle speed, and F word to specify the feed of the tool. So apart from that, so the, every CNC program consists 90 percentage of M cores and the G cores. The maximum portion of the uh, NC program consists the uh, M a G codes, preparatory codes. Then after uh, we we can the next priority comes to the miscellaneous functions, machine control functions, first tool motion controls. In any of the program, tool motion will be the most important criteria so that the more commands are specific to the tool motion commands. So those are called these preparatory commands, preparatory functions are the G codes. Then the machine control commands. The next priority comes to the uh, tool tool motion and the next priority comes to the uh, tool commands i mean uh, machine commands machine control command those are m codes so maximum portion consists the g codes then the uh, then then the portion of the program is filled with the uh, machine machine motion command i mean machine commands which are specific to the mission those are called the m codes then the remaining words we can use s word t word f word and all those x y z coordinate words all those we can use but maximum portion of the cnc part program consists the g codes 
then then the program is filled with the m codes then the other words then as i said just now uh, preparatory functions are specific to control these codes are uh, specifically to control the movement of the tool i mean to or uh, i mean how the tool will to move uh, to the programmer target we have one target to reach the tool at, at every instant tool has to reach the uh, route i mean uh, reach the targeted point so that targeted point uh, will be controlled i mean the movement of the tool on the work plane will be controlled by the preparatory functions in turn we can call those as g codes okay. then uh, as you can observe some of the uh, g codes here so g00 is used for rapid positioning means uh, while starting the program so there are some ideal motions of the tool so it does not require uh, much time so it should not be slow so the uh, tool must move in a rapid mode so that we are going to use we are going to instruct the tool our mission to move the tool uh, in a rapid mode to save the time because it is a ideal motion uh, sometimes so the tool has to move uh, ideally on the work plane so that uh, we are going to instruct the mission during that time to move the tool uh, in a rapid mode that is the g00 command so we will discuss this rapid mode and uh, uh, we have in the next slide in the coming slides then we have z01 code and it is for the linear interpolation linear interpolation means where which tells us this code instruct the mission to move the tool uh, linearly or in a straight line path for example if you are performing the uh, machining on the edge of the workpiece or the milling operation in that case so we need to move the tool in a straight line path okay that is called the linear interpolation so we will see the interpolation uh, what is what exactly the interpolation we will define in the coming slides then we have the circular interpolation in this case the tool is going to move in a circular path so this is called the circular interpolation maybe uh, a tool can move clockwise or anti clockwise in the case of the circular interpolation when the tool is moving in a curved path whether it is moving clockwise or anti clockwise this is also very very important so these two we will see in the coming slides then suppose if you want to delay the tool or if if you want to hold the tool at some location we are going to use g05 command so similarly we have number of uh, g commands g codes or the g functions or the preparatory functions so which are specific to perform this specific function so you take one here g33 is specific to thread cutting and we have one more command uh, tool or uh, radius compensation we will see what is compensation in the coming slides so then uh, we have the uh, maximum spindle speed we can define uh, we can restrict the mission uh, speed not more than that value by using this uh, command then g70 we have g70 we can specify whatever the values we are providing that should be uh, in inches inch units so g70 by giving g70 we can instruct the mission uh, i mean the values that we are going to provide is is in inches and if you use g71 in that case the metric units mean the values are the coordinate values all the reference values if you specify in the program g71 it tells us i mean the machine will take the values whatever you are giving in the program will take as metric units or mms okay then we have threading cycle for turning i mean cycle means suppose frequently if you are repeating one process like turning like threading that is called cycle so we have the threading cycle frequently you are performing threading operation in that case you can call this a uh, cycle and you can repeat the operation any number of times so how many number of times you want you can re repeat that uh, operation this is called cycle we have different cycles turning cycle drilling cycle then we have boring cycle then we have deep uh, drawing cycle deep drilling cycle peg drilling cycle we have all those we will see in detail in the coming slides what are those then uh, if you want to use if you want to cancel the command i mean uh, can cycle 
so that is called the it then git you can use cycle can be cancelled then uh, 81 simple drilling cycle you can use and then uh, with dwell you can then peg drilling as i said just now and then uh, absolute programming means as i said just now the coordinate values are specified absolutely with respect to one coordinate i mean one origin that is called the absolute positioning i mean the all the values are the coordinate values of the tool will be programmed with respect to one origin that is called or the tool will take the coordinate values with respect to one point in the case of absolute programming that we have seen in our last session then incremental means the the next location of the tool is specified with respect to the current location this is called the incremental that means the values that we need to move the tool to the next location is the increments of the current location that we have seen uh, in the last session also then uh, we have the feed rate in mm per minute and sometimes if it is milling operation in that case uh, the feed needs to give the feed unit should be mm per minute how much distance uh, how many millimeters the tool is moving per minute time this is what the requirement we need to specify based on the mission uh, feed in what way the mission needs to calculate the feed that is also very very important next when it comes to the uh, turning operation in that case the meaning of the uh, feed varies because in the case of uh, milling operation the feed is mm per minute how much distance the tool is advancing in one minute whereas in the case of turning operation how much distance the tool is advancing in one revolution of the component because in the case of uh, turning operation workpiece is going to rotate okay against the uh, stationary uh, tool okay then in the case of the uh, milling operation in the case of milling machine the work is uh, work will be held stationary then the tool is going to reciprocate and of course during the depth of cut the tool will be moved linearly so that is different thing but during the actual process during the actual process during the actual process the work will be held stationary in the case of uh, milling machine okay let me move further to discuss the uh, different types of uh, preparatory functions as i said just now absolute and incremental dimensioning uh, g g g90 and g91 codes are used for controlling the dimensioning system the in the program suppose if you specify g90 it will take that as in inches and if you take this as uh, sorry the g90 means it will take all the coordinate values with respect to one origin and absolute values means the values which are calculated with respect to one origin one point is called absolute position that means all the coordinate values in the program will be referenced one one point that is called the uh, absolute positioning with respect to that point all the values will be calculated then incremental means as i said just now the next location will be calculated with respect to the current location so in the in the form of increments so that we have seen in our last class okay so these codes used for absolute and incremental is 90 and 91 then as i said just now the rapid positioning in the case of rapid positioning uh, i mean somewhere else the tool i mean the machine the tool is also having some ideal moments on the work plane so during the moments of the ideal moment during the ideal moments the tool must move uh, rapid mode so i mean within the i mean uh, it, it it must take less time to move the tool in the work plane during the ideal motion ideal moment of the tool ideal motion of the tool so in that case we need to instruct the mission first we need to identify what is ideal because we are reading the process plan thoroughly so based on that we will prepare the program we are fully aware that what is what is ideal moment so those moments must be performed and must take very less time than the actual cutting time so during i mean we must be able to reduce the time of the moment of the tool during ideal motions so that can be done by instructing the machine 
using one command that is called g00 so if we give this command or if you give this code if you instruct or if you use this positioning code or preparatory code the tool will move in a rapid mode uh, because a, a, a mission and in any, any of the program so consists number of ideal motion, ideal motions so which can be controlled uh, which can be performed in a less time using one code that is called g00 this is called rapid positioning of the tool we are positioning the tool in rapid mode that's why we are calling this as rapid positioning code that is g00 the format of that is g00 xyz that means we are specifying the target location here g00 g00 followed by the target location xyz coordinate that means the tool can be anywhere whatever the target we are specifying the tool will move with the speed of the mission whatever the speed that we set in the mission so the tool will move with that speed to the specified location where here you take this xyz so to the xyz target location the tool will move in a rapid mode 00 g00 so we are instructing the tool to move to the location xyz in rapid mode that means it is g00 this is what the format we use in uh, ANSI programming to position the tool in a rapid mode rapid mode so you can observe here initially the tool is at this location suppose if you instruct the tool to come at this location we need to specify the coordinates in front of that if you specify g00 the tool can be anywhere that will come to the specified target location in rapid mode this is what the rapid position is. then we have the linear interpolation this is also very very important preparatory function basically interpol interpolation means the calculating the coordinates of the tool with the known values with the known coordinates suppose if a if a tool is moving between point one to point two in between that we do not know suppose in between that if you want to control the movement of the tool we require, we require the coordinates so the in what way we are calculating the coordinate values from the known values from the known coordinates so that is called the interpolation basic definition but in the case of linear interpolation the tool will move in a straight line path in a straight line mode to the uh, target location suppose your tool is at some location now current location and you are specified the target location then if you specify the mission using linear interpolation code that is g01 so the tool will move to the target location uh, in a straight line mode that is what the meaning of the interpolation linear interpolation so this command is to uh, instruct the cutter to move from existing point to the target point along a straight line path that is what the linear interpolation so the format of the linear interpolation is g01 then x y z then f indicates the field so normally this g01 is used during the cutting operation because it is the not ideal movement it is a cutting operation sometimes if you are doing work on the milling machine almost all the cutting uh, motions of the tool are in a straight line mode so we use g01 to uh, during the cutting operation by specifying the target location and also uh, along with the target location we can specify the feed rate up to what feed the tool has to move so that also we need to specify this is the format of the linear interpolation g01 x y z and f then we have other interpolation that is the circular interpolation circular interpolation then uh, the other command in preparatory function the other code in preparatory functions is the circular circular interpolation this is also very very important functionality in any of the cnc programming or in any of the cnc mission the tool has to move in a curved curved path so in that case so we have some command to instruct the tool to move in a circular path so which may be uh, clockwise or which may be counterclockwise basically we have two circular interpolation commands one is g02 and the other one is g03 g02 
will instruct the cutter to move to the target location in the circular arc. So in, in clockwise direction. Suppose if you want to move the tool in counterclockwise direction. So if we use Z03, the machine tool will move to the target location from the current location to the target location in the, that will move in the circular path along the and, at, and that also follow and move in counterclockwise direction. To move the tool in circular path, basically we require uh, we require the circular interpolation. We can either you can use Z02 or Z03. Suppose if we use the code Z02, the tool will move uh, in a circular path as well as in the clockwise direction. Suppose if you use Z03, the tool will move in a circular path. As along with that, the tool follows the path in counterclockwise direction. This is what the difference between the Z02 and Z03. So circular interpolation clockwise and circular interpolation clockwise. So along with that, but whenever we instruct the tool, we require two coordinates. So I mean, instead of, uh, I mean, despite of having, despite of having start point and an end point, Whenever we want to instruct the tool to move from starting point to the next location, our current location to the next location, to move the tool, we require the center point, basically, or the radius. So to center point coordinates are also required whenever we want to use this circular interpolation command or the code. So either it can be a clockwise or anti-clockwise, we require, because we are moving the tool in circular path. So a circle must have a center. So center coordinates are also required to move the tool or to use this circular interpolation in the, any of the CNC machine. So those uh, parameters are IJK. So these can be specified using an addresses, IJK addresses. And uh, I is the distance along x-axis and J is along y-axis and um, K is along Z axis. If you specify IJK, Z, IJK values, the system will understand this as the center along with the start point. If you specify IJK values along with the XYZ values, that is the current location. And if you specify IJK values, that means that indicates the center point. Let us see this uh, with a figure. So this is exactly the format of uh, uh, circular interpolation. As you can see here, uh, clockwise direction G0T we have to instruct the mission then XY is the current location of the tool start point then IJ will give you the center of the uh, Karur path. So we are instructing the mission to move to follow the Karur path and the start point is XY then the center point is XC and uh, I and J. The center point is I and J. So I you will get XS minus XC, Y you will get YS minus YC. That this we will see in the next slide. Then in the counterclockwise direction, as I said just now, we have to use Z03 start point and followed by the center point, you can see I and J. But in this case, the I and uh, J will be given by XC minus XS and YC minus YS current location minus start. So XC and YC is the coordinate of the centers. Then XS and YS is the coordinates of the start point of the arc. This is what the, um, the let us see this in the figure. You can see uh, the circular interpolation in this in a figure. Uh, yes, in the case of circular interpolation, you can see uh, this is your X axis and Y axis. In the case of clockwise direction, whenever you want to move the tool clockwise direction, this is your start point and XS and YS. And this is your end point. This is your end point. So you require the center point and XC and YC. So to get center point, I and J, of course, in turn, you can call this as I and J. XC, you will get XS minus XC, then YS minus YC. I you will get, I value you will get XS minus XC then J value you will get YS minus YC. And then in this case, XC minus XS you will get. 
if it is counterclockwise direction you can see here so xc minus xs so this i value and j value this is i value and j value you can see here so this is what the coordinates values of the center center point we require to that we need to calculate i comma g so this is called the uh, circular interpolation so let me move further to discuss the programming format there are different programming formats the format used on any of these cnc mission may be based on the manufacturer or the manufacturer of the cnc mission so every mission is having some uh, needs to follow some programming format so the manufacturer is going to decide what format that mission is going to work so while purchasing the machine itself we need to specify so i require a machine which will work on the so and so format programming by using so and so format programming so the manufacturer or the builder is going to decide the control machine on which format the control machine is going to control unit of the machine is going to work basically there are three types of programming formats one is fixed black format and we have the tab sequential format so then we have the word address format there are three types so word address format tab sequential format fixed block format as you can see here in the case of a uh, fixed block format uh, the number of characters in every block is same the number of characters in every block is same in the case of fixed block so that we are calling it as a fixed block format the words in each block must follow the fixed sequence even the sequence and the number of words must be same number of characters must be same number of words must be same and those words must be followed the same sequence the order of the words must be same like the speed feed depth of cut and the coordinate values center sequence number as of now you remember that a block consists of all this a block is nothing but one command in the last session we have seen that a block is nothing but which is responsible to one action on the machine too one action involves number of uh, parameters like the speed feed depth of cut and its target value start start point and that uh, that block must have one address means one sequence number so these words must be in a specified order in the case of fixed block format uh, each word must follows the same sequence if you go to the next block the sequence of the words must be same in the case of fixed block the characters must be same the number of characters in each block must be same the number of words in each block must be must follow the same sequence to when you go to the next block but we have one advantage when we use fixed block format the whole instruction block can be read at the same instant instead of reading character by character but in this case the mcu is going to read the block at a single instant that is the advantage of that so this is uh specifically this format can be used for positioning the work only this when this format is not used to control the missions as we have seen some of the commands can be used to control the missions like m codes but this is this format is specifically used to control the movements of the work only then we have other type that is fixed block format so in the case of fixed block format um as you can see of course this is the fixed block the example you can see here so feed speed are the same for 10 blocks you can see so we have first block here second block here and third block here so this order must be same uh, order must be same and as well as uh, from the next block also and to the next block also we need to specify the speed and feed it should not be blank so every word must have the value that we are using at that instant that is the disadvantage of this fixed block format the other other block other uh, format is that tab sequential format uh, this is used to separate the words in the uh, block in a block so we have 
a number of words those words are separated by tab in this case so all the words in a block in the case of tab sequential format these words are separated by a tab so that means the machine control unit will read word by word and after reading one word and that will be kept in the memory so after reading all the uh, words in a block then the instruction will be issued to the machine control unit to perform the action on the machine control machine unit or the machine tool unit so now you can see here we have an example of uh, tab sequential format so 50 is the sequential line 60 70 and we have one word here maybe it is x value x coordinate and we have tab value so each word is separated by a tab that means the machine will come to know the machine control unit will come to know will come to know so we are ending the word and it as and when the machine control unit reads the word it will be kept in the buff it will be kept in the uh, temporary memory or buffer and after completing all the words after completion of all the uh, words in a block then the instruction will be sent to the machine control machine unit or machine tool unit to perform actual action so suppose the, the we have one advantage in this case suppose uh, in the case of the fixed block format so every block must have same characters same number of digits same number of uh, sequential order for the words suppose we are using some speed here so the same speed we are not going to vary for the entire operation so in that case this speed need not be mentioned in this case but whereas in the case of fixed block format for a, every block we need to specify speed feed and depth of cut but in this case you need not specify the speed and the parameters which we are not going to vary in the coming block in that case you are not going to specify so just if we use tab there the previous value will be taken in this space so now you can see here so we have a 25 uh, 4, 25400 here and this is replaced with a tab here that means in this block the speed or the value that is specified in this location will be used in this block exactly whatever the value located in the or specified in the first block or in the previous block will be taken in this current block so this is the advantage of the tab sequential format so the repeated values need not be specified in every block this is the major advantage of the tab sequential format every tab will be used to separate the words in the block in the case of fixed block format we are not going to use the tab but but the values which are repeated needs to be specified that is the disadvantage of the fixed block format but the repeated values in the case of tab sequential we are not going to specify then we have other format that is word address format so the words in the block need not follow the fixed sequence that is the major advantage of the word sequence for it in the case of uh, tab sequential format fixed block format so we need to follow the order but whereas in the case of word address format it is not necessary to follow the same sequence for all the blocks so the sequence can vary according to the requirement so that is the advantage of the word address format so every word is going to signify because it is having some specific meaning so that means every word is having some address or some meaning example you take uh, one block here so you have n20 here this is one word n specifies the sequence number of this block then g specifies the preparatory code then x specifies the x coordinate like this x 1.00 so will signify as that x is the coordinate x coordinate value is one point so every word in the case of word address format is having some meaning okay so similarly you can observe here s is here s 1000 means s signifies to the machine uh, this is the speed of the spindle so with 1000 rpm the spindle needs to rotate but in the case of 
tab sequential format and fixed block format so every word is not having specific meaning the order itself tells us the location of that i mean the numerical value indicates the uh, the specific meaning for that block that's where the sequence of the words is very very important in the case of fixed block format and tab sequential format in the case of word address format so we don't require to follow we don't write the words in a specific order we need not follow we need not, we need not arrange the words of the block in a specific sequence because every word is having some meaning meaningful address so that this is very much flexible in modern days in nowadays almost all the programmers will use this word address format because of its flexibility to write the program then the other content in this slide show is the canned cycles canned cycles are the cycles so example you take the turning operation my objective is to reduce the diameter of the shaft from 30 mm to 20 mm with a depth of cut 5 mm with a depth of cut of 2.5 mm so to reduce the diameter for 10 mm 20 to 30 to 20 so for a depth of cut of 2.5 if you give i mean it requires two passes in two pass we can reduce the diameter from 30 to 20 if you give 2.5 depth of cut so in one pass we will give 2.5 it means two passes so we need not i mean in this case to, while writing the program we are going to repeat the steps even though the except the variable here is only that uh, only sometimes if you want you can vary the depth of cut also but the the motions of the tool is same the depth of cut is same here maybe sometimes depth of cut may also vary but it is a cycle basically turning is one cycle for a same length for for same length turning for a same length of turning with a variable in you may be variable in depth of cut we can call it as a cycle because a cycle consists number of repetitive movements of the tool repetitive movements of the tool in that we can call as a cycle so can cycle is a pro pre programmable sequence of events so i mean pre programmable sequence of events or motions of this tool stored in the memory of the computer that means if you call one cycle suppose if you have a turning cycle we are going to call that cycle which is having some sequence of motions or events so which is stored in the machine controller so we will call that controller i mean we will call that a uh, cycle and use that to perform turning operation in this case even you can i mean cycles cycles are specific to operations like a turning cycle is different then uh, threading cycle is different peg drilling cycle is different reaming cycle is different like that every operation is having cycle we will see the different cycles in the coming slides it must have some specific format turning turning is having some specific format threading is having some specific format we need to provide some values in that format some parameters so that format is having some parameters like the depth of cut then retract height then the feed rate speed and all if you specify all so the machine automatically repeats that until to close that or until to cancel that cycle so that will be repeated so this is called cycle so cycle is a pre programmable sequence of events or motions of the tool which are stored in the machine controller so this is uh, as i said just now it is a repetitive cnc motion operation such as drilling threading boring then every can cycle has fixed cycle format as i said just now every uh, can cycle is having fixed cycle uh, format unless you cancel that the machine will repeat that cycle so that means we to cancel the cycles we have some instruction we have some commands uh, functions by using those codes or the we can cancel until to cancel that the cycle will keeps on i mean goes on repeating then it is actually when we use the cycles we can save the time of the programmer then we can save the effort of the time and as well as the effort of the programmer this is the advantage of the uh, canned cycle 
then when it comes to this simple turning cycle um, let us see the format in the comments slides yes exactly this is the format of the turning cycle uh, g71 is the code uh, used and u r then basically this simple turning cycle consists two blocks of statements standard format of statements so it is uh, g71 and u r then g75 pq u w f s now you can see here first block u indicates the depth of cut the machine whatever the value followed by the u will indicate that so the machine will take that value the numerical value which is followed by the u alphabet u will be taken as depth of cut then you take r uh, the value numerical value followed by r indicates the retract height that means retract height means the clearance height after completing the turning operation or after completing one pass after cutting one uh, uh, pass so the tool needs to move up the tool needs to maintain certain clearance between the machine surface uh, to the tip of the tool so that height is called retract height how much distance the tool is moving after completing one pass or a single pass is called the retract height or the clearance from the work plane to the tool tip so this height we need to provide the first block we need to specify depth of cut as well as the retract height retract height means the clearance between the work plane to the uh, tool tip then the second block consists the pq so p indicates the uh, contour start block number and q indicates the contour end block number so we have some code in between two blocks so p block i mean p sequential number and q sequential number so in between these two blocks we write some code so that code number sequence number will be specified here so the code which is in between p and q block numbers will be executed during this cycle okay so we will write some code between two sequence numbers so that code will be addressed at this location the start point of this block number and end point of this block number will be specified here to repeat the cycle so when you execute this when you use this g71 pq uwfs the code between p and q sequence numbers will be executed and repeated until to cancel this is what the meaning of the contour start block number and contour end block number then we have the u so finishing elements in x axis then finishing elements in z axis the values we need to provide uh, finishing elements so which will be used during the finishing time suppose if you want to specify some uh, finishing elements along x axis along z axis for the next pass so those values will be specified here if you don't want you know, it is not necessary to provide the finishing values for the next pass here next cutting pass it is not necessary suppose if you want to provide some value finishing elements for the next pass or the, for the next cutting so those values will be specified here along with this we need to specify feed and speed so for every repetition of the pass so we require feed and speed with how much speed so this cycle is going to repeat and with how much feed the tool needs to rotate um, uh, move during this cycle these two values needs to specified along with the first block the address of the two blocks needs to specify in between those two blocks the code will be executed how many number of times we want we can execute then the uh, finishing elements along x axis then finishing elements along z axis can also be specified if we want otherwise we can keep this values as zero if we don't want to specify any finishing elements in the next pass it is not necessary to provide these values then we need to specify feed and speed for each pass 
So these, let us see this with an example. Uh, so let us see an example here. So we have G71 cycle working sample code here. So N60 is a sequence number here. Sequence N60 indicates the address of one block of statement then G71, U10, and R10. So G71 here is the cycle code. G71 indicates the cycle code. Then we are specifying, we are using turning cycle. G71 means turning cycle we are using. And U and R, U is specified with 10 number. That means the depth of cut is 10 here. For each pass, the depth of cut is 10 then the retract height is 10 that means for each pass after completing every pass the tool come back to this height the tool needs to move a certain height so that height is called retract height that is also 10 millimeters in this case then we have other sequence block that is n70 so in this case basically we require two blocks in the case of turning cycle G71 turning cycle requires two blocks as we have seen in the previous slide. So G71, PIT, Q90. Now you can see PIT and Q90 are the block numbers, are the sequence numbers of the block. You can see NIT and N90. So PIT indicates the sequence number of one block and Q90 indicates the sequence number of another block. Whatever the right we write in between N80 and N90, that will be executed during this cycle. Until to cancel this cycle, the code between N80 and N90 will be executed. Okay, so th those address of the blocks we are specifying here, T80 and 90, need not be true. We can write any number of uh, lines of code between 80 and 90, that will be executed every time. Uh, during the simple turning cycle. So that those addresses of the blocks we are specified here, starting address of the block and ending address of the block we are specified. Then we are also specified here the depth of cut along x axis, is finish cut along x axis is three, finish cut along z axis is zero. Then feed rate is 0 0.25 millimeters per revolution we are specified here, feed rate. So this is the sample code, uh, which tells us how the work will be performed in uh, turning operation. Let us see uh, the diameter of the workpiece is 100 here. When you use this code with respect to this workpiece, uh, we are turning for a length of, uh, for a length of 75 millimeters, right? 75 millimeters. Your origin is at this location. That means zero, zero. This is Z positive. This is X positive, Z positive, then X positive is here. Now, with this code, you can, you can analyze that, right? You will see the movements of the code. So the moment you call this code, or the moment you embed this code in actual program, the machine control unit will assume that the depth of cut is 10, the numerical value which is followed by u indicates the depth of cut and the retract height as 10. The code between 80 and 90 needs to be executed repeatedly until to cancel this scan cycle. And the finish cut along x-axis is three, finish value along z-axis is zero and feed is 0 0.25. Automatically, if we use this code, in main program, the program will automatically understand until to cancel this cycle. So this will be repeated. So let us see how this code will be executed with the figure. So now you can see in the first cut, so you have starting point here. Okay, in the starting position, in the starting uh, point, in the starting time of the code, the first time, the moment you call this code, in that case, the tool will move in x, x direction, x direction, the first moment. So depth of cut we are already given. So that is 10. So the tool will move 10 millimeters along x axis. Depth of cut we are already provided. So the tool will move along, will follow the path of one. 
so 10 millimeters it will move down then the second moment is that the tool will move so now you can see here automatically exactly the value is 60 so z0060 so neit so at this location the the tool will move okay first of all at this location the coordinate values are 60 x coordinate value is 60 and z coordinate value is zero that we are not specified that means it is zero only so now you can see the tool will move in a rapid mode to x coordinate value at this location followed by path one along x axis tool x so that means we are provided 10 depth of cut originally okay originally uh, whatever that can be okay so it will move up to 10 mm distance 10 mm depth of cut then the tool will move then the tool will move along z axis now you can see minus z axis so your z positive is in this direction z negative is in this direction so in rapid in in uh, linear mode so now you can see we are instructing tool g01 indicates the tool should tool needs to move in linear mode in negative z axis for a length of 74 that you can observe here. so this is the path followed by the tool in the second step so in 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 linear mode then the third step in this code is that it will come back it will come back to a certain point to a certain point so that is called the i mean retract height so the tool will move back for a height of 10 millimeters so for a height of telemeter i mean it will come back it will move to 10 millimeters back in 45 degrees angle so now you can see the third indicate the third line straight line indicates the movement of the tool in 45 degrees angle now the fourth step in this code is that again the tool will come back to the starting point again the tool will come back to the start point okay so then after coming here the fifth step is that the tool will take the path of 10 mm depth 10 mm depth fifth point then again the depth of cut is 10 this is fifth indicates the retract height to the previous so then it will take the 10 more depth of cut again it will move along negative z axis and in linear mode so these five six and one first moment fifth sixth are in rapid mode whereas you can see uh, the second moment and seventh moment are the linear mode so where actually uh, the the path at which the actual cutting takes place so this is linear mode again it will move to the 70 mm distance 75 mm distance again it will come back to the retract height in 45 degrees angle without touching the uh, surfaces otherwise the work plane work piece will spoil again it will pack again it will come back to the original point like here this happens and until to cancel this so the operation will continue like this this will be continued until to specify until whatever the code we writes so that will be executed this is what the uh, concept of the turning psyche now uh, you can see the repetition steps moves to the starting point z then of course you can use the finishing cycle along with that suppose if you use g70 along with the g71 uh, if you use g71 after after g71 if you use g70 g70 will be used along with the uh, g71 g71 indicates the rough cut turning g70 indicates the finish cut turning so if we use g71 it can tells the machine uh, in the last cut this the g70 will be executed in the last pass in the last cut only g70 will be executed at that point the finish cut takes place the values that we specified along with g70 will comes into the picture and the mission will read the values of the g70 block and that will be executed during the finish cut 
and in all the passes the values which are specific which are assigned which we are specified during g71 block or in the g71 block will be executed in all the passes except in the final pass in the final pass in the final cut the g70 values will be executed this is what the g70 if you use g70 the last pass values will be taken by the value specified along with the g70 in all other passes the value specified along with g71 will be taken in all the passes this is what the a uh, simple uh, finish cut turning and then thank you uh, very much we will see the some of the contents uh, which are specific in uh, cnc part programming we will see in the next session then we will see the different uh, cycles also in the next uh, session we will see the drilling cycle peg drilling cycle then we will see the deep deep growing cycle and reaming cycle boring cycle we will discuss in our next session uh, let me uh, see the what let me see quickly what we have discussed as of now simple turning cycle we have discussed with an example then we have discussed the um, concept of can cycle we have discussed the different uh, programming formats basically we have three programming formats one is word address format tab sequential format then we have fixed block format so these three are the cnc part programming format then we are also discuss the different uh, preparatory important preparatory functions used in programming uh, those are what is circular interpolation then we have the linear interpolation we are discussed in the case of linear interpolation the tool will move in a straight line path in the case of circular interpolation the tool will move Uh, will follow the circular path maybe in the clockwise or maybe in the counter clockwise this we have discussed then we have seen the uh, other preparatory commands as absolute and incremental dimensioning we have seen rapid positioning we have seen what is the importance of rapid positioning then we have seen glimpse of the other g course we have seen then we are also discuss some extent or the important miscellaneous course in this session thank you we will see we will meet once again uh, in the next session thank you